Greetings all, this is Harry Nick, I'm joined by Justin. Hello! How you going dude? Not too bad, we have a fire spray. We have a fire spray and we had the Imperial Conversion Pack open this morning from Bell of Souls. So yes, I have to work through all of that. Unfortunately Justin is here with me now, it takes a lot of prep to do those videos so I'm not going to be recording that with Justin, but I have you here to talk about the fire spray and that's Indeed. pretty cool. Like. It, it was at one stage an imperial ship. It's not anymore. That's right. It has deserted the Empire. Yeah. And I, I kind of think that makes sense. I, uh, I think everyone feels better for it. Well, no, I'm getting a few comments here and there. People saying, oh, why isn't this on the Empire anymore? And the simple reason was the Scum Faction did not exist in Wave 2. Yeah. Um, they even had just a pilot called Bounty Hunter. Um, because that... Generic w- Bounty Hunter. Yeah. It's like that was just representing what the... But the bounty hunters were back then. Yeah. They didn't. They never thought about making their own faction, or at least they didn't know the game was going to get that big. And it did. And now it really doesn't make sense for it to be on the Empire because, frankly, no. apart from like Boba Fett, occasionally these pilots don't really have any affiliation to the Empire. Kath Scarlet specifically raided Empire ships. Yeah. It always bothered me that she was in the Empire faction. Yeah. Well. They also, you know, went against the rebels as well. But yeah, that's the whole thing. They're mercenaries. They do whatever they want. Yeah, they specifically do not have a side in the war. Anyway, let's scroll down to the spread and see what we got. So in this pack, we have a total of six pilots and 12 upgrade cards. In this article, we see 12 upgrade cards and five pilots. So we're just missing one pilot. Um, There's no generic, so I'm going to guess it's going to be either a reprint of the Bounty Hunter or the Mandalorian Mercenary. What, probably Initiative 2 or 1? Yeah, I'm going to guess Mandalorian Mercenary at Initiative 2. It was PS5 before, it was actually pretty high up. Um, But considering that we pretty much have all those spaces covered by the unique pilots, um, Cressus Trellix, for example, is Initiative 3. That's like the midway point from the old PS5. So I don't think we're going to get Mandalorian Mercenary at the relatively high initiative anymore. So before we look at anything else, we're going to take a look at the titles because they give you a bit of a steer as to the kind of builds you want to be making with the ship. First of all, Slave 1, the Slave 1, Boba Fett's personal ship. After you reveal a turn or bank manoeuvre, you may gain one stress token. If you do, set your dial to the manoeuvre of the same speed and bearing of the other direction. Add a watermelon slot. A uh, hell of a pilot said it quite well. You can trick your, the opponent. Like, if the opponent tricks you, you can then work around it and things like that. But Yeah, it could be good. Yeah. Um, what I think is good about that is the fact that you can basically choose on the fly where your ship goes. Um, say, for example, um, doing a three bank in right or a three bank in left would be beneficial for you and your opponent has to try and guess which one you're doing well you just make it up on the spot you wait for them to see where they fly and then you fly the direction that they did not cover yeah, that's but, one way of dealing with it but it is giving you stress which I think is fine I, yeah. I think just being able to do that indiscriminately is could be a bit powerful yeah, yeah I, just to be able to do it Willy nilly is way too powerful, and you need to be able to gain the stress from it. I, I know what you mean. It's very situational, yeah. and this ability has been shifted from the old Boba Fett Imperial Pilot card, yeah. and now this can go in conjunction with any of the Fire Spray's pilots. Uh, it, it is an addition to other pilot skills, yeah. and it's like what we're seeing with the Boba Fett uh, Crew card, which we'll talk about in a tick. It's taken an existing pilot skill and plonked it into a generic card that can go in conjunction with pilots, basically because that old pilot skill was not good enough. Um, It didn't consistently see play. It didn't didn't yield consistent results. Um, So FFG basically went, look, I like the thinking behind this, but at the cost of a pilot skill, this isn't good enough. And that's why they've chucked it on this. And I like that. Plus, it adds the watermelon. Don't really know what we can really do with that. The Mm. ship already has missiles. And it doesn't seem like there's significant benefit from having torpedoes over missiles. There's no extra munitions anymore. So, uh, I don't know. Maybe the fire spray one day will get some great torpedo that it definitely wants. But it is not this day. Let's move on to the next title. Andrast has made it in second edition. It's been simplified a bit. Instead of adding two bomb slots, it adds a bomb slot and the reload action. And Mm. I I like that a lot. Um, Adding three bomb slots was problematic because then you would end up spending a lot of points on bombs if you didn't get to use all the bombs that made you a bit salty because you spent a lot of points on stuff that was just wasted and that's not a good thing in x-wing but if you're reloading bombs you're not spending extra points on them you're just getting them back 
essentially for free. I mean, what I love about a bomber that uses reloads is the reload action will prevent you from shooting. It will not prevent you from dropping bombs. So you can bomb, reload, bomb, reload, bomb, reload with hmm. not much downside. I mean, yes, it has three primary dice. You don't want to not be shooting, but at least you're still doing the primary thing that your ship wants to be doing, which is bombing. Yeah. Um, specifically with the aim on Azamine pilot card, which we'll talk about in a tick. What I like about that reload is you can use it on your missiles as well. Yeah. And there's at least one pilot we're going to talk about in a tick, which is going to benefit greatly from that. Now, yeah, definitely. Old Andrasta costs zero points. I'm going to guess this one won't. No. Um, it's got to be sort of significantly more expensive for it to go, okay, this is not an auto add so you can reload your missiles. Six points? Yeah. I mean, yeah, like the old three points. Could be. Uh. The main thing I'm thinking is this is sort of pushing you towards wanting to use bombs. So if you use it in such a way that uses missiles, it's almost like it has to cost a bit more to kind of punish you for doing that. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll talk a bit, bit more about that when we look at some builds with the pilots. But we also have pictured here Marauder, which is Cash Scarlet's personal fire spray. While you perform a primary rear arc attack, you may reroll one attack die and add a gunner slot. So hmm. sort of the old Calf Scarlet ability. You don't get one more die. Um, very few things give you one more die. Yeah. But there's also the added benefit of it can go on to any fire spray pilot. Um, it can be used in conjunction with Calf Scarlet. It can also be used in conjunction with Boba Fett. Mm -hmm. which I actually quite like the look of, um, and adding the gunner slot. Uh, now, in the pack, it's really gearing you towards using the veteran tail gunner. There's so much better gunners out there. Well, it's hard to say, Justin, because the veteran tail gunner gives you an extra shot. That's really good, but you have to have a ship lined up in your front and rear arc. Yeah. And I think um, newer players in particular will look at that and go, oh, that's really cool, I get more shots. you just got to be real careful with that. Same with the veteran turret gunner in other packs. You have to line up a shot in the, the forward and reverse facing of your turret. That's not always easy to do. No. Um, and I like this. I like this with Calf Scarlet um, because she gets to modify her dice. She can do it across multiple attacks. That feels really, really good. Mm -hmm. um, but the reason I was really psyched about this in the last couple of videos I was doing on Lando's Falcon was Han Solo. The fact of the matter is now you can put Han Solo in any of the fire sprays if you mm -hmm. take the Marauder card. And look, the primary attack at the rear giving you a reroll is just yeah. gravy. There's nothing wrong with it. You don't need to synergize with that. So now you can have Boba Fett with a gunner Han Solo, and he's not frozen in carbonite. Yeah, it's <laughs> kind of bizarre, but I guess it's representing you know Boba Fett and Han before they were rivals. I guess they were probably always rivals. I mean, I guess we'll find out in the Boba Fett movie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I like that. I just like... Um, Purely from a game design point of view, having Han Solo on these. Yeah, maybe from a flavor point of view, doesn't make a whole heap of sense. But mm. uh, yeah, getting free focus tokens seems really good, especially considering the Fire Spray has a white boost. The fact of the matter is, Whoa. if you put engine upgrades on the Fire Spray in first edition and you boosted, you did it at the risk of losing all your tokens. Yeah. Now, Boba Fett can boost into range one and Han can give him a red focus. Mm. which means he can it, it might mean he takes a ship off the board it might mean he defends better but he has that flexibility and that's a really good thing and again depending on points Marauder might be really expensive it might not be efficient to use it with Han but that's something in particular I'm looking very closely at Crassus Trellix the Imperial Deserter Ooh. he's gone now he's yeah. not coming back <laughs> that is that is spot on design oh. right there because he used to be on the Empire faction and now no longer is yeah and more of the point, he's actually good now. You can perform forward arc special attacks from your rear arc. While you perform a special attack, you may reroll one attack die. Yeah, this seems really, really good. The old version just worked with cannons, I believe. Um, yeah, it, it wasn't good. No. Uh, but this can shoot cannons and missiles backwards. And it gets rerolls off them too. Yeah. Uh, I think this guy is a clear candidate for the Andraster title because he gets to reload his missiles. And just looking at all the options he can take, um, yeah, there's a lot of fun stuff he can do. With the Slave 1 title, he could take advanced proton torpedoes, fire it forwards or backwards with a reroll. <laughs> I don't think you want to, Whoa. but that is an option nonetheless. I just think, like, good middle-of-the-road missiles is where this guy wants to be. Concussion missiles, yeah. uh, cluster missiles, uh, maybe proton torpedoes with the Slave 1 title. I just... I like the Andras title too much because he gets to reload. Yeah. Uh, which seems really, really good. Also, Andras, it gives him bombs and that gives you something to do while you're not shooting. 
<laughs> so that's good too. You could take the bomb generator and just bomb and missile and bomb and missile and bomb and missile. Yeah, it feels really good. This feels like the guy that wants ordnance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it feels like the guy that kind of wants to be the Django Fed of the faction. Koshka Frost, icy professional. While you defend or perform an attack, if the enemy ship is stressed, you may re-roll one of your dice. The first time I saw this, which was way back right after 2nd edition was announced um, in that original Scum article, I was down on this um, because I wasn't aware of how much incidental stress there is in actually in 2nd edition. Yeah, and (laughs) we don't really have the tools to stress your opponent, apart from Asajj Ventress, but even Asajj Ventress' ability can be worked around by negating green tokens, so that's not quite as good. Mm. But the fact of the matter is, this is just good. You don't really need to abuse it too much. It feels a bit like what Boba Fett's doing, except it works at all ranges, which is cool. But the difference between this and Boba Fett is this relies more on what your opponent's doing. Mm. Um, Boba Fett is more... It's more proactive. You are enabling your own ships to fly into range one. Koshka Frost has less agency over your opponent getting stress in general. Um, I think rigged cargo shoot is a no-brainer for her. We know that this ship still has list slot. It comes in the Lando's Millennium Falcon pack, so scum players have access to it, even if you don't buy the conversion kit, which is really, really good. Um, yeah, just it's not much to say. It just seemed like a decent all-rounder. I don't yeah. think there's any other upgrades that really jump out at me as things you want to put on it. I think as a light build, this just seems okay. Yeah, this is just going to be one of those ships where you go, oh, I've got you know maybe an extra, what, like... Maybe 60 points or something? 60, 70 points. It depends how much it costs. Yeah. I mean, Initiative 3, sort of middle of the road, uh, the old Mandalorian mercenaries, uh, I feel like is going to be around about the costing list, so about 70 points. Yeah. Um, It will definitely be less than the 100-point mark, less than half of your list. Um, And I think that's good. I think that means you can have a more weighty ship, say... um, Han in the Millennium Falcon with a big fat build alongside Koshka Frost might be viable. Yeah. Just with the way the points value out. This is all speculation. We don't know the points yet. But mm. it is worth mentioning that, yes, you do seem to have some kind of efficient lower initiative pilot that might just give you a nice budget build. All right, moving on to the Initiative 4 Emon Azamine. Shipping Magnate. If you would drop a device using the one straight template, you may use the three turn, three straight, or three turn, that's either left or right, template instead. So this is a functional reprint of the old Emon Azamine. For some reason, we're referring to bombs as devices. I guess because we have bombs and mines. Because bombs being bombs and mines, well, hang on, isn't bombs bombs? Mines are not bombs, mines are mines. So yeah, they're they're simplifying the language there a bit. Um, Yeah, seems good. The problem with Emon Azamine in first edition is he had no EPT, and that just hurt him so much. Um, He was the only fire spray on the scum faction that had no APT, which was kind of bizarre because the generic pilot below him did. And it actually made the Mandalorian Mercenary in some builds more desirable, which just seems utterly bizarre. I mean, he was only one point more than the Mercenary, but still, I never really sat well with me. I think if they're going to give these pilots talents, he should have one too. Uh, Maybe don't give one to Koshka Frost. I could see that being a reasonable thing to do. Um, it is, after all, sort of the budget ship we're looking at. So, I mean, I prefer having talents on all of them, but if they're going to drop one, it'll be Koshka Frost in my eyes. Mm. Um, and yeah, Emon Azamine obviously wants to work with Andraster, obviously wants to drop curvy bombs and stuff. A fine candidate for the bomblet generator, uh, yep. being able to use up those shields to get more bombs. But right. having said that, bombs have charges on them now anyway, so you're still going to get multiple uses out of them. Plus, you can just reload your bombs now, and look, if you don't want to shoot, that's fine. I still think it's a bit of a hefty cost not being able to shoot, but at least you're not stopping yourself from bombing. That's the Mm. thing I really like about Reload, the ability to bomb over and over again. Yeah, definitely. Not too much more to say. Uh, No crew or other titles really jump out at me as being usable with him. Mm. Uh, I I don't think you'd want to use missiles because you can only reload one thing at a time now. So, yeah, I just think focus on the bombing with this guy and you'll have a grand old time. Kath Scarlet, Initiative 4... Captain of the Benari Pirates. Ben- like th- Benari, Banya... I've never got this right. Bi- binary. Binary? I, I, yeah. I thought Benari. Benari. Let's go with Benari. Yeah. I like the fact that they finally put that there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and it actually incentivizes you to fly alongside Benari Pirates. Yeah. While you perform an attack, if there is at least one friendly non-limited ship at range zero, in, in other words, a Binary Pirate, yeah. of the Defender, roll one additional attack die... 
Um, primary attack, yes, so you can't abuse it with missiles and stuff. I don't care. I don't well, think it really needs that. Now, a lot of people are down on this ability. I just want to point out to you guys, X-Wing 2nd Edition, we don't get extra dice. It just doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, get, usually it's re-rolls. I mean, we saw in the Marauder title her old ability in the form of a re-roll. And yeah, I, I look at this and I think, yep... Yeah, it's going to be hard to play around with. It demands a build around. I don't think you're going to want to like one like sort of big generic ship next to you. I think you're going to want a lot of small ones. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, binary pirates is pretty much all you're looking at there. But I like the ability to add one dice, and with the Marauder, you get a reroll at the back. With veteran tail gunner, you can get multiple shots, possibly multiple shots with extra dice. Yeah. What I see going on with Cast Scarlet is it's a very traditional scum thing. The floor on this is super low. The floor is you upgrade it with all these things and nothing happens and you're wasted all these points. The ceiling is you get multiple modified shots uh, for like two or three turns yeah. in the game and you just wreck your opponent. So <laughs> it's a bit like that, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah, Justin's kind of like just here like tilting his head going, yeah. Yeah, like if you manage to pull it off, you are sitting there like dancing around the table going, I'm the best. I think in terms of competitive X-Wing play, this is not usually the kind of thing pros look at no. because they want consistency. Yeah. Um, look, you've got Marauder. You could still take Han Solo with this. And this with Han Solo feels pretty good mm. uh, because modified shots with focus tokens are nice. Huh. Uh, you, you know, this doesn't give you focus conversion to get an extra dice. And that ups the chances of getting more focus results. Plus, at the rear, you have a re-roll. So you're seeing a lot of dice with this. Um, so I think Han Solo could become a pirate and be pretty comfortable with it. Mm. Veteran Tail Gunner just strikes me as that kind of thing that you're going to invest a lot of points in. It's not going to be cheap. Multiple attacks is just too good for that. And it's going to not activate. I think you could look at some more consistent things like Han Solo. And yes, while Calf Scarlet ability is still super spiky and you need to sort of set it up, you're not relying on other super spiky things to happen. And you can just get a bit more consistency out of it just squeeze a bit of results out of it if we just be a little bit less spiky overall by the way i know i'm super high on han solo i don't care i think the card looks amazing yeah it'll depend on the costing but yeah there's a good reason for that plus i also think calf scarlet might be a good candidate for the han lando because um calf han and lando you get extra dice re-rolls and focus conversions which means you're going to hit with four dice pretty consistently if you get all that set up. And setting up Han and Lando isn't too hard to do. No. I, I quite like that little combo there, yeah. that's for sure. All right, let's move on to the man of the hour. Now, we've already seen this ability. Initiative five. While you defend or perform an attack, you may re-roll one of your dice for each enemy ship at range zero to one. Boba yeah. Fett, notorious bounty hunter. Mr. Bob A. Feet. Mr. Bob A. Feet. Yes, exactly right. Um, yeah, this is mm. pretty much a functional reprint of where he was in first edition. I don't care. Uh, yeah. I think he is basically the template that you basically have to scale the other pilots back on. Mm. He was by far the best pilot in first edition. Um, I know a lot of people love Cast Scarlet. In my experience, I mean, I have flown the crap out of this ship. Boba Fett is just more consistent and he punches like a brick. Still does. Mm. Still does. I mean, I like that classic fearlessness build with Boba Fett. I mean, classic. I mean, classic because I like to use it. Yeah. Um, and look, fearless still works with Boba Fett, but you have to only work out the front arc. And But that's pretty much what he always used to do anyway. Yeah. Um, I, I love the potential of using him with Han Solo. I love the potential of using him with um, changing those banks and turns to get the perfect shot. Mm. Um, it just seems like there's a lot going for this pilot. It looks like there's a lot of good options for him. Um, native boost is a huge thing on Boba Fett. Yeah. The, uh, the yeah. moving it down to a medium size, I think, is actually going to help the ship. Yes, um, it gives them a little bit more reach. So yeah. I, I can understand how that's a, a slight nerf to Boba Fett. It also means he can get out of situations a lot more easily. I mean, yeah. when the fire spray got double stressed and was facing the edge of the board, it was just such a pain to turn it around. I used to hate that in first edition. Yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, it's just tweaked in the right ways. We don't need to change Boba Fett's ability. I think FFG were right to not touch this. Um, I mean, with Han Solo, being able to boost into range one, take a red focus, and <sighs> shoot four dice, uh, re-roll one with a focus token... I, yeah, I really yeah. I look at that combo in particular and just think, yeah, it's not high symbiosis or anything. It's just going to be so good. Mm. Being able to boost and still get a token. Yeah, yeah. I, I've <laughs> not much to say. No. I, I love 
everything they've done with the ship and Boba Fett is just it's going to have a field day in second edition at least oh, at least for the first couple of waves that's for sure alright the last thing I want to talk about is the card Lone Wolf yes it's been revealed before but when I previously spoke about this I was a bit down saying oh it only works once per turn blah 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 not so good but I do want to just quickly mention this because I actually think this card is in a real good place right now it's now a much better option than Predator when you want to re-roll on attacks because you don't have to be in a bullseye firing arc yeah. Um, it's on any attack. It doesn't have to be blanks either. It, it's only once per turn. doesn't work on your defense as well, but I think that's been a real push to Lone Wolf. And specifically on the fire spray, it's on a medium base. It has boost. It's going to be able to fly away from your friendly ships. I mean, it's expensive, so you're not going to have a whole heap of other friendly ships unless you fly Calf Scarlet. Mm. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to point it out. I think this card looks a lot better than it once did. And I just wanted to mention that quickly. And that is the Slave 1 expansion pack for Wave 1 of X-Wing 2nd Edition. It looks boss. Yeah. I am so excited to play um, Wave 1 Scum for 2nd Edition. I think it's going to be uh, yeah. very, very competitive alongside the Falcon. Yeah, you're going to be enjoying yourself quite a lot, I believe. Yeah, I think, in fact, looking at everything that's coming out Wave 1, I think, yeah, Scum are going to get those big ships. Um, they're going to have those options. They're not going to be able to, like, field swarms as effectively. Like, they'll have, like, one ace in Fen Rao, but I think, like, the two big ship scum builds are going to be back. Yeah. I think on the Empire, we're looking more at swarms and lots of small ships. And on the Rebels, we have those classic handshake stuff. With um, Saul's Renegades, there's a lot of power with, oh, the, with yeah. the tandem flying on the Rebel faction. Yeah. And I think to start out these waves with some good, clear faction direction is fantastic. And I love the fire spray. I always did. Now I love it even more. Thank you so much, FFG. And thank you guys so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Like me on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter and Reddit. And we'll catch you guys later. Bye.